All right, so this video is on initial conditions and particular solutions. So we've already seen that the equation y equals the integral of f of x dx has many solutions, right? We know that it's going to have a lot of them because it's got that plus c, right? We just have that differing uh, constant. This means that the graphs of any two antiderivatives of f are basically just vertical translations of each other, right? The c is different. The thing that we're adding, we add up one, up two, up three, down one, down two, down three. They basically are just a lot of different, uh, a lot of different values that just differ by how they're shifted along that y-axis. Now, notice here that if we take the integral of 3x squared minus 1dx, we're going to raise this to 3 and divide by 3, so you get 3x cubed over 3, which is just x cubed. 1, we know that the derivative of a constant is just that constant times x, and then the plus c. So these are all the graphs of x cubed minus x plus c when we let c be 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, etc. Okay? All of these are possible solutions to this differential equation, dy dx equals 3x squared minus 1. Okay? They all work. The problem is we might want, this is, this is a general solution, right? We might want a particular solution. So if you are given enough information, you can find that particular solution. Now to do this, what you need to do is the value, you need to know the value of uh, f of x for, for just one value of x, okay? This is what we're going to call an initial condition. So, for example, notice in figure 4.2, only one curve passes through the point 2, 4. Oops, wrong way. 2, 4. Only one of these passes through the point 2, 4. So if I'm given that f of 2 equals 4, then I can solve that as an initial condition, right? How do I do that? Well, I know x equals 2 when f of x equals 4. So I get 4 equals, right, 4 equals 2 cubed minus 2 plus c, right? So when I solve this, that's 8 minus 2 plus c equals 4. We can solve that out. We get c equals negative 2. Therefore, we can, instead of having x cubed minus x plus c, we just change that c into negative 2, and we have a particular solution. All right, so let's actually look and see if we can figure this out on our own. We want to find the general solution of f prime equals 1 over x squared, assuming that x is positive, and find the particular solution that satisfies the initial condition f of 1 equals 0. So we have enough information here that we should get an actual answer with no unknown constant. So we're going to integrate 1 over x squared dx. So we're going to start by rewriting that, the integral of x to the negative 2 dx. Now we're going to add 1 and divide by negative 1 and then say plus c. So I'm, I'm, right away I can see that f will be equal to negative x to the negative 1 plus c, or negative 1 over x. Now, we're given f1 equals 0, so we're going to start, we're going we're gonna, to gonna highlight this, and we we'll keep this here, and we're going to come over here and say, okay, we get 0 equals negative 1 over 1 plus c. Therefore, 0 equals negative 1 plus c, add 1, c equals 1. Therefore, I can come back over here and say, okay, I can take that c and replace it with 1, and I'm going to get f of x equals negative 1 over x plus 1. And that gives us, and we can check this, right? We can take the derivative of this. The derivative of negative 1 over x is change the sign, make that x squared, so positive 1 over x squared, derivative of a plus 1 is 0. So I know that the derivative is right, but is the f of 1 equals 0? So if I plug in 1, I get negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Absolutely. Bam. You've got your answer. Circle the right one. All right, so if you have any questions about finding a particular solution using integration, uh, just shoot me in a remind or ask a question in class.